That's right. I have personal beef with a 10 year old kid in an anime because I got nothing better to do. I'm gonna yell at Norn and I think I have the objectively correct opinion. Isn't that funny? A correct opinion, whatever the fuck that means. I think Norn is fucking ass. I think she's booty cheeks. I think she's annoying. She's insecure, stupid, incompetent, but it's a very normal character. She is a depiction of a child who is that age, who saw what Rudy did to Paul and has all these different problems, right? It totally makes sense. I think Norn is a very realistic character and Aisha, is not a realistic character. Aisha is too cracked, too gifted, but it's just funny to kind of banter and kind of shit on Norn because I don't know why, just bullying kids is funny to me. Now, what we've seen from Norn so far is annoying, but we gotta give her a chance. If she cooks, if she truly is the best character, we saw that one video, right? We saw the thumbnail at least, that got like a 200K view saying, why Norn Greater is the best Mushoku Tensei character? I think that's just fucking rage bait, but the author himself also apparently claimed that Norn is, her fa is his favorite character. So like, clearly there is potential. Clearly she does something and is very useful later on. But right now, I'ma continue shitting on her until she changes. Let's begin today's reaction. <laughs> this camera work behind is kind of interesting. Also, yes, good call, good call, good call. Resolution, wide linea persona. Wide linea persona. Normal linea persona. Wide linea persona? Normal. Wide. Wide. What? Thick linea persona? The bullying more relatable things. <laughs> Yo, what kind of face is he making? The random professors are like, holy shit. Rudy's fucking pissed, bro. They're fucking mad, mad. Wait, wait, wait. He knows what that's like. He'll go save her. Good big brother. This camera work though. Look at Rudy. That's a whole ass deer. Is Norn supposed to be sitting here? But she's not. It's an empty table. Is anyone bullying her? So is Rudy trying to figure out like why she's upset? You are you the cause? I, I thought Norton was hiding in her room because even though she is out, you know, and is not it's not in Rudy's place anymore, that's still kind of like she has that problem that's not resolved. I thought I didn't think that someone she was actually getting bullied. I thought it was still with, you know, her feeling insecure compared to Aisha and the whole brother relationship, but there might actually be a bully here. Who did this? Hmm, that girl. Hmm, she got a stink eye, but maybe it's just because of the cat girl. That's just racist. That, that. What did the deer do to you? That's just fucking species. I thought Rudy is the reason, but there's an actual bully or not. What? I don't care if they actually bully her. <laughs> He's just so mad. He's ready to kill somebody. He's like, I don't even care if they got bullied, really. You just confess. I need to fucking... I need to fucking kill someone right now. Yo, these poor freshman kids. Alright. The teacher did it. The, the fucking teacher bullied Norn. The teacher was like, Yo, are you sure you're Rudy sister? You're so fucking trash. And then, then, then Norn stopped showing up. We gotta fucking tear the teachers limb by limb. That look, man. Uh huh. No, no, she did not. Chill, chill. I heard about you. As in talent versus Norm being like an average student. It's not bullying. It's not bullying. But Rudy said, I don't care if she got bullied, right? Rudy was like, I need just some motherfucker to confess. And if you're kind of involved in it, I'm going to kill you. This, this girl is about to fucking die, dude. The turning point's about to happen to her. He doesn't understand. He doesn't get it. 
he doesn't get it. That Big Bro is such a genius. Big Bro is him. Literally, Quagmire, Dragon Slayer. Someone that, you know, fought on toe to not, not a toe to toe with Orsted, but you know what I mean. Incredible feats. And Norn, you know, obviously is overshadowed, right? Living in some sibling's shadow, it feels bad. You feel like you're not even your own person. People don't even call Norn Norn, I bet. She probably calls her, like, your Rudy sister, you know? It's like living in someone's shadow. It's stuff like that, right? <laughs> I bullied her too. <laughs> what? You just jumping to conclusions is insane because that's what happened to him, right? That's what happened to him. But like, god damn, you think that she would do that? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, dude. Constantly being compared to Big Bro. But he doesn't understand. He's jumping to conclusions of like, oh, she must have been bullied. Just like how I was bullied. But the situation here is totally different. Rudy is at the core of the problem here. And he doesn't understand how Norm feels around, you know, being compared to a big brother like. <sighs> so sad. And you know what the sadder thing is? If Aisha wasn't here, she would have fucking aced it. She would have fucking clutched and they'd be like, whoa, wait, you're Rudy's little sister? Nah, Aisha, you're way cooler than Rudy. Yo, you're so much better than Rudy. Yeah. It's you. Skill issue. <laughs> what are we gonna do about this? Like, how can we make her feel by like she's our own person? It isn't. It's not his fault, right? Like, it's not his fault that Norm feels that way. But like, it's still he is the reason why she's being compared. And if Norm, obviously, you can't just tell a fucking ten-year-old kid be like, hey. Who gives a fuck about what other people thinks about you and compares to? You are your own person. You should be able to, you know, live without having the validation from out outsiders. And you are your own person. You know who you are. You should be fine with that. But you can't tell a fucking 10 year old kid that. She, the brain is just not developed. Now, if you told Aisha that, it would be different. But how do we handle it with Norn? You look pretty scary. It was funny. The little sister was in the back of the classroom when we just entered there, right? Was that her? I can't remember if her sister, because these are the chiefs. Yeah, we were at the Dotras, you know, the, the furry village, remember? And we trained the kid too. There was like two kids there. One was a fighter, one was like a, you know, a soft girl. And then one of them, the, 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 maybe a different cat girl? I can't remember. But I do remember, because like, they are from the village. They're the chief's daughter, but like, there's another cat girl. Yeah, Bro combined earth and water magic at the same time to make a cup and what? Whoa, this is like the bread scene. Maybe the bread animation was better, but it's just like an out of place, just a random fucking scene where the animation's insane. We need. How do you not pick up a shut-in? Uh, in the rom-coms that we've seen, where the main character is a shut-in and a loser and just has nothing going on, there's a girl that shows up out of nowhere and saves them. We need... And Rudy can't do it. We need to pay some kid, a dude, to be Norn's savior. Ain't no way you said we need Norn to be isekai. <laughs> we need to send the girl to somewhere else. How do we do this? Because like, if Rudy tries to help, she will say fucking no. If he tries to be supportive, she will might... She'll probably, like fight against it. Maybe if you're just always there trying to be supportive, maybe one day she'll realize that he's trying to help. I don't know. Maybe do we have someone else try to do it for her? Is Selfie the answer? No. I don't fucking know. What'd you say? We'll make her go to class even if you try. I don't think that's the answer either. Like, just brute forcing this is not the way. Your brain is fucking rotted. Your brain is fucking rotted, Linia. You're not even fucking following the conversation. Yet. <laughs> huh? 
<laughs> peak, peak, peak. These two are fucking peak. I thought cats are smarter than dogs. What the fuck? The cat was stupider than the dog, bro. No one wants to do it. You know it best. How do we solve this? Yeah, so it's like, how do we solve this? Uh, Rudy got isekai and then, and then got introduced to Roxy. And then Roxy took her out on a horse. And then Rudy was like, oh my god, I was fine. And it, it worked. So we need to isekai Norn and then have a Roxy equivalent to take her outside. I, I don't know. <laughs> Bye. It just leaves. I don't know. This is tricky. Human God! Human God should show up right now and tell us the answer and how to solve Norn. And then the human God will say, Rudius, you need to kill Norn. This is for the greater good of humans. <sighs> you thought stealing first year's panties and delivering it to Rudy was a great idea. I don't trust you. I do not trust you two. You two share the same fucking brain cell. Princess Arya. Okay, there's a presentation. Will Norn show up? Probably not. <laughs> Luke is such an EK man, dude. Just look at him. <laughs> I know I look good here standing like this. I know, I know. He's not even listening to Ariel. I don't know. Maybe he's so respectful to Ariel that he's listening to the speech with his eyes closed. But something about him right now just, he just looks like a little fucking pretty boy. Sneak in and see Norn, okay? <laughs> It's my fault because I was with Eris last time and now Norn says, Oh my god, he's with another woman. I don't trust you. That's what Norn said in the last episode, right? She was like, You with another woman, womanizer! But then it's like, bro! Blame Paul's genetics! Somehow, huh? Alright. Let's see how this goes. Whoa, Earth magic. What is all this shit? Oh no. Okay, we're sneaking, we're, we're smuggling Rudy in. Person of buying time. Nice person, nice, nice. Like if we just show up, she's not gonna be happy. But I guess the whole point is like, we need to let her know that we're trying and trying to be sincere. In the beginning, like it's not gonna be just, it's not gonna just work in this first pass. But like, if we keep doing it and keep telling her, kind of show with actions that, hey, I'm here for you no matter what, then maybe she will eventually fall. She just said room service. Break in. Oh! That's a guy's voice. That's a dude's voice. That voice was Rudy when he was shut in. Now we're getting more parallels of the shut in Rudy arc. So Rudy's trying to save himself right now. Obviously, this isn't actually Rudy, but kind of like what he's envisioning. Yeah. Oh boy, here comes some depression time. Hello. Are you okay? He's not okay. What are we gonna do? We can't do anything. She's gonna reject all help. Lore. Okay. More shut and lore from back on Earth. Huh. But here's the thing, right? People that are shut in like this, it doesn't matter if you're objective. You cannot tell you know, people that's shut in and oppressed like uh, ob objectively logical, rational, you know, um, solutions. They don't care about that. It honestly does not help at all. Sometimes, instead of telling someone like that, like it, if you try to help somebody that doesn't want to be helped, it, it does not fucking work. So sometimes it's better to just listen to them, you know? Just don't say anything. Just be like, you know what? I'm here for you. And I want to hear what you have to say. Because like nothing you say will change their mind. They need to internally change themselves, but it's hard for you to just like enact that. So all you can do is just kind of 
be there for them. That is like the worst thing you can do. Right? It's, it's like, you, you can never be like, bro, you think your life is hard? You think you're depressed? There's motherfuckers on the other side of the continent that's a starving and in poverty. Your life is so much better than them. It's like, nah, objectively you're correct, but it's like, that is not gonna help. They'll continue to run away even more if you do that. Mentally, I spit on all of it because he knows exactly. So if he has been in that same situation, then he should be able to come up with the proper solution. It's that there's nothing you could possibly say to change their mind. You just have to be there and just be willing to listen. Yeah, and I bet Norm feels the same way. How could you possibly know what I'm dealing with? But he does know how what he's dealing with. He probably thought that you're beyond helping and I'm just wasting my time and, and you start to get angry at the person who's trying to help me. Like, he's that, that selfish motherfucker. Like, I try to fucking go out of my way to help you out and you're not even going to take it? Fuck you. Fucking fine. Die in depression then. That's probably the mindset the brother had. More parallels? If the answer really is to just listen, do we just stay in our room like this for hours without saying anything? It's Season 1, episode... For 14, 15, when he beat the shit out of Paul? I don't know. I'm so fucked up for laughing at this. But like, when this happened, it just came out of fucking nowhere. And the, the, the idea of just like a little kid like Rudy beating the shit out of Paul, like a drunk Paul. It was just so shocking that it was comical to me. I still think Paul deserved this shit. Like, he was out of fucking line. If I remember correctly, he felt insecure about how Rudy is developing so fast. He always did. And then this all came to a boiling point when he realized that he couldn't protect anything. And then he lashed out at Rudy saying, If you're so competent, why didn't you save everybody, right? A grown-ass man fucking lashed out at his child. And I was like, you know what? You deserve this shit, you drunk motherfucker. Like, straight up. He deserved that shit. But, you know, it still doesn't really make it right. <laughs> No, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't punch the kid there. No, this makes sense from Norn's POV. Like, how old is she, right? She's like fucking like five years old, like six or some shit, right? Like, like if you just see this, like, how could a child possibly, like, understand the nuances of what's even going on here? All you see is your big brother beating the shit out of the person that's trying to protect you, right? Of course you're gonna feel that way. Got woman. You fucking womanizer. Hey, blame Paul for that. Blame Paul for that. It's not my fault Ares fucking left me with the fucking broken dick. She fixed it. She deserves this. No shot you're blaming Rudy on why he's not trying to help mom. No shot. Fuck you! No, no, she doesn't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know that, you know, Paul's going to the other place, to the more dangerous territory. So he, Rudy has to fucking babysit you. Like, he is indirectly helping, you know, trying to save mom. But she, she doesn't know. She, she doesn't know. That's wrong. I think Rudy cares. But in her mind, she feels like no one cares. I bet even Aisha does care. It's just, you know, they banter all the time. So you kicked yourself out. She thought that she get kicked out. Huh. Such a different perspective. The vibes that, you know, I have with Aisha and Rudy and everyone else. And this is how Norn's thinking. She's like, no, nah, I can't. Like, I'm scared. What if I get kicked out? What if Rudy starts beating me up? <laughs> No, he's different. Oh my god, even just like letting her do her own thing is like, maybe he doesn't care about me. So like, if I got mad, then you would think that we care about you? No, you would think that we fucking hate you. It's just no winning.
そう考えるとなぜか少し悲しく。はい If I say no, you're gonna be more upset. If I say yes, you think we don't care. There's just. What do I fucking do? How do I just. I, how, do I, how, do I, how do I get out of this? Rudy. That's when she said it. Do Rudy is. Psych. Can she even use magic? I don't think she can. Like, what can she do? I don't think we've ever seen her fight. And, like, you need to develop the talent early, or else. Because, like, if you don't start early, remember? The mana pool does not get, like, um, increased. When you're a kid, you need to get on that. Like, like Julie right now. Julie's in the boot camp. She's going to be cracked. Norn already, she might be a little bit too old to start doing it. I don't know. I feel bad. I feel bad. I feel bad. I don't know. I kind of quick, quick, quick little off tangent. But when I was in high school, I was kind of like Rudy. Not Rudy back on Earth, but Rudy in Academy right now. And you guys might think Cap, Cap. Nah, I was him in high school. Best at every fucking subject. Captain of sports teams. I had a little brother though. I had a little brother who's four years younger, and he knew that like coming into the school, it's gonna be like, oh shit. You're his brother? So it's like, I already knew that and I knew how he'd be compared to it. And I didn't know how to handle it. So I tried to like help, but it's like, he obviously felt like he was living in my shadows. So what I did then was <laughs> kind of like the Itachi and the Sasuke thing. <laughs> you need more hatred to grow. No, I didn't do that, but I totally understand how a little brother is going to feel about this and feel like you're living in their shadows. You're not even your own person. People think you as you're that person's brother. Like, imagine that, right? It's, it must be like a, such a shitty feeling. So I try to really be like... <laughs> almost like I try to like hide the fact that I had a brother not really it was almost like like a concubine that never talked about so he could never be compared to me I don't know it's it's a difficult situation he eventually had to move he, he didn't have to but he did decide to move schools you know to a, to a different school in the, in the city because like when I was in like my senior year in like grade 12 he came into like grade 8 so he moved to a different school after that and everything was fine but this kind of situation I can Definitely understand. A little bit from Rudy's perspective, probably not from Norn's perspective. Again, not Norn, Rudy's sister. You tell him yourself! No, man, she needs to follow her own footsteps. And, huh, kind of interesting. How if she actually felt this way, then she would turn into Horikita Suzune. You know, classroom of the elite. Trying to chase after a perfect Manabu. Manabu is a goal. This idealized vision of the perfect brother. I need to be like him. Look how that turned out, huh? So like, this is Suzune if Suzune never pursued that and was like, fuck that shit. She needs to figure out her own stuff. This is better. I think this is better that she's going to figure out this like earlier before, before trying to just like chase after this this like end of the rainbow this this destination that doesn't exist trying to be like rudy now she needs to be like norn whoa roommate bird girl that's pretty cool luke no she's getting fucking fed up with hearing rudy and rudy and rudy huh gonna show me this scene <laughs> when it's so getting dramatic and serious the music is swelling up nor keeps saying i don't want to hear it i don't want to know it's just repeated iterations it's gonna get developed even more and more and then you just drop oh this is how linia and person that was stealing the panties by the way she's just every first year so <laughs> wait did they go to norn and do it did, no they, they 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 knew who norn is there's no way that they would have done that to norn they look so smug <laughs> they look they don't even know who Norn is. Oh my god. Well, I'm not sure if this happened or not. Is this implying that they already took Norn's panties? 
No, this is no one seeing what's happening with like, uh, you know, big bros fucking furry warriors, right? The soldiers are going out to get the panties, so she's probably thinking, oh, this is scary, what the fuck? <laughs> Mr. Deer is also a big Rudy sin. Because he's sick? Because he's Quagmire? Because he's the strongest? Because he beat the Demon King in a duel? Duel? He slayed a fucking dragon? Fought a fucking dragon god Orsted? But Norn doesn't know that. Norn doesn't know that. And even if Norn knew all of Rudy's feats, would Norn give a fuck? Is there but possibly a future where instead of Norm being in the dark, people kind of start to tell and she starts to realize all the things that Rudy has accomplished and she realizes, holy shit, my big brother really is him. You know what? I'm proud to be his little sister. Would there ever be a path like that? Hmm. What's wrong? You're not eating well? Ow. Panic attack. I think that's a panic attack. This is okay. She has that hesitation in her heart where she feels like Rudy might be a good person. Some traveling companion? I don't think we've ever seen this girl before, right? Probably just some random companion that we were traveling with. Ginger? Xanoba guard? Xanoba sim? Ginger. Rudy's your mother clutched there with this word. Paul also told me that Rudy's a good person. This is good. This is smart. This is better than what Big Brother was trying to say to Rudy when he was depressed. You come in with a sentimental way saying, I understand why you're feeling like this, and you apologize. Even though Rudy is not all in the wrong, this is definitely the best way to approach this. Okay, she's starting to realize that he might care. <gasps> Paul! But Rudy... The parallels, bro. This episode, as soon as we entered the room and Rudy saw, you know, Rudy's back in the, you know, the day, the depression, the whole room. And this time, Norn, you know, opens the veil, sees Paul, but then it's actually Rudy. Bro. Every time he grips that fist, I got a little scared. This is the opening, right? This is a revised version of the opening, right? Oi! I think it's... I think we've done it. If we've done it. I won't run either. Rue just said it, right? Face your family. And everything is good? Oh. Nah, Aisha would have never had to do this. Aisha would have never fucking cried. She's just perfect. But hey, 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 Norn! Hey, we did it. We did it. Kind of. This is definitely the right steps moving forward. If we want to support this girl, we want to, you know, let her know that we're there for her. This is the best way to do it. You approach her with a sympathetic way. You see, you apologize and you simply say, is there anything I can do for you? And you just stay there. And then she'll open up after hearing the good words put in by Rougeard, Paul, and everyone else. And yes, <laughs> class to delete, classic. <laughs> and that should do it. Norn tool added to the fucking, you know, shed. Oh! What the f Yeah, I can't really hate her anymore. I, I, I can't hate her anymore. I, I guess it's time to... I, I guess the title of today's video is gonna be I was wrong about Norn Grey Rat. And it's gonna be like a... Face. <laughs> with Norn there. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be something like that. She's fine. He's cool with Sylvie too. Everything is great. Everything is great. That was a lot of development in one episode. No. But you did do everything. Right? He thinks that he didn't do anything. He couldn't do anything. But he did everything there. By just listening. And just like, you know, being there for her. No, baby steps. Baby steps. 
Honestly, they kind of did, right? Because the biggest thing was the hesitation in our heart that Rudy might be a good person from the words of Paul and Ruijard, right? And all Rudy had to do was just be there and help out holding hand, and then things kind of did sort of by itself. I would argue that this helped. She pulled out something I never managed in my past life. Rudy just didn't have the same support structure. Rudy never had a Paul. Rudy never had a Ruijard that was there to tell him good things. Rudy never had a Rudy, right? The older brother was not like him there. Instead, the older brother was like, yo, don't you feel guilty that you have all these nice things going for you while other people are homeless, bro? Like, come on, you're probably not that bad, right? We didn't have that kind of person. Rudy understood his own issues and the experience that he had when he was on the other side. And he applied that and was like, you know what? I'm just going to shut up and just listen and be sympathetic. And that's going to reach your heart. So I feel like he's selling himself short. He didn't... He didn't have the infrastructure to succeed, unlike Norn. I guess the one difference there, if I could be like Norn, you know? Norn rejected, right? Norn rejected other people's takes. But the other people's takes, in Rudy's example, was pretty bad. I don't know. I get what he's trying to say, but I feel like it's not a direct example. I understand that Rudy kind of pushed people away, but the people that were trying to ask, we're also not approaching it the correct way. Alright, more past life trauma solved. They did clutch today. Linear person, yeah. Foreshadowing? Would this ever fucking happen? If Nanawashi goes back? Tell my older brother a message? Interesting. I feel like even if that message doesn't reach him, this is kind of just to tell us, the audience, that Rudy has been able to figure out his own problems back then, and he has come to a resolution, and he's ready to move forward, and be willing to make peace with the older brother, right? Basically, he is the norm right now, having the development to the older brother and saying, thank you for what you tried. That's the episode, but... The stage is set, right? Marriage, happy. Little sister, the problem, happy. Everything is happy, happy. It's really the happiest we've ever gotten. And I'm fucking tired of it. Enough of happy times. Give me turning point. I want despair. Everybody's hearts must be fucking broken. Need to go back to fucking more, you know, modern disasters and the ores that's showing up and mass teleportations. Good, good. Enough of this happy ooh shit. I'm fucking done with rom com slice of life Mushoku Tensei. I want the fucking Kora Mushoku that I fell in love with, which was basically in Core 2 of yeah, Mushoku Tensei, but. That's pretty much it, right? Today's episode, we already talked about it. It was a very wholesome episode of, you know, understanding the problems of people that's depressed, really applying his own concept of what he could relate to Norn and being there for him, and then everything just kind of sorting itself out, right? So, yes, I told you. Norn is still a fucking annoying kid, but now she's gone through it, and I think that she's a much better character, and I'm willing to say that she's a great character now. Yeah, I think she's made a complete development, complete turnaround. She's not as useful as Aisha just yet, but the amount of development she had, Dub sister. Fucking dub sister. And oh man, dude, next episode with fucking turning point three. What in the fuck kind of title is turning point three? Hey, but we'll be there for it. But hey, if you're still here, if you didn't do this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. And until next time, take care.